for so many years, just the sheer fact that we could save people who were at the extreme of illness and the extreme of injury was the focus of all of our care. We can save anybody in the ICU, but are we creating survivors or are we creating victims? In a prolonged ICU stay, there's a significant amount of muscle loss that occurs and weight loss that occurs. You can lose a kilogram of lean body mass a day. That leads to incredible weakness and loss of function. Even the most fit patients suffer this. They really become chained down by the long-term effects, whether they be psychologic, cognitive, physical weakness, lack of endurance, and opiate withdrawal and addiction cycles. When we first started introducing early mobility back in 2002, most people felt like all we're gonna be doing is dragging the person along. In the early part of my career, you would never even consider mobilizing somebody that was on life support. People are afraid to get sick people up out of bed because something bad will happen. And so the fear is the first thing to overcome, and then the second is you do have to have the right help. It's honestly not the physician that's really the one that does most of this, it's the nurse, the physical therapist, and the respiratory therapist. The respiratory therapist's goal always is to try and minimize ventilator length of stay. Some of the research I've seen with early mobility says that we can improve that ventilator length of stay by two days. When I go and we go to assess an individual, we're doing it in the midst of being part of a multidisciplinary team. As a physical therapist, to me, it's all about movement. Movement matters. If we get you up and moving earlier, we, we can give you less drugs, we can make you less delirious, and we can get you out of the hospital sooner. When I'm interviewing somebody and treating somebody, I want to know, what activities do you want to do? What's most important in your life? What do you want to get back to doing? It's such a big deal if somebody can actually use their hands to feed themselves or to be able to comb their hair. And that's where early range of motion is really helpful. When patients can do things for themselves, there's a level of control that they have that changes their outcome. It really changes their mindset and really can move things along. Early mobility programs are being adopted across the country. We need to be encouraged to eat and to walk and to do exercises that encourage balance and strength and, and mobility. They actively mobilize these patients with these incredible cannulas. They've got all their blood flowing through them, pumping their blood outside their body, and they are walking down our hallways. We take the sickest of the sick, and they walk. We're only at the tip of the iceberg, really. There's so much more to learn about what happens to people in their acute care stay and how that affects their long-term outcomes. It isn't so much about mortality, it's about quality of life.